Hey guys, this is Dion here with Your Guitar Academy and welcome to our Tom Mish player study. So I'm a huge fan of Tom Mish and I really love the way that he's brought the guitar or kept the guitar at the forefront of this style of music. He's kind of in that real kind of soul, jazz, pop category that's really, really popular right now. So some of the things that I love about him that we're going to be covering in a lot of detail are his kind of use of some more interesting extended chord voicings his incredible touch and also his amazing sense of melody. And he really crafts these awesome, catchy melodies on the guitar that will stay in your head for ages. So throughout the course, we're gonna be looking at, as I said, different chord voicings that might be new to you, where you can use them. And we're also gonna cover some of his kind of percussive sort of rhythmic finger style technique through a few different patterns that he would use. And then we're gonna also learn a couple of pieces one that's a kind of faster, funkier style piece, and one that's got a bit more of a slower, kind of soulful bossa sort of feel to it. And throughout all of that, we're gonna be looking at the techniques, the tips, the tricks, all these kind of little staccato flourishes, this pick control, velocity, all of this awesome good stuff that Tom Mish uses all the time throughout his playing. So in the first unit, we're gonna be covering in detail some of these chord voicings. So that will be including minor nine chords, major nine chords, as well as some altered dominant seven chords. And we're gonna be also applying those to a couple of progressions, one of which is a major two, five, one. So if you don't know what that is, this is gonna reveal all about this side of music. And in this first lesson, we're gonna be looking at two minor nine chord shapes and where you can use them most notably to substitute for minor seven chord shapes. So. Grab your guitar and let's get going. If you've just joined us, don't forget you can head straight to the website to get all the additional course materials, including tabs, chord boxes, backing tracks, all entirely free. And also please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We always love to hear how you're getting on with the material. All right, let's dive straight in and talk about some minor nine chords. So if you're not familiar with what minor nine chords are, they're essentially an extension of a minor seven chord. So if you also don't understand what a minor seven chord is, let's talk about that. So they sound something like this. Very cool, slightly sophisticated, slightly kind of jazzy sounding chord that crop up a lot in this kind of neo soul, modern soul pop style of music that Tom Mish plays. So, you know, let's look at the actual intervallic buildup of a minor seven chord. So we have a root note, we have a flattened third, we have a fifth, we have a flattened seventh. So any combination of all of those notes will create a minor seven chord for us. So in the case of a minor nine chord, we also add the interval of a nine on top. So if you're not familiar with what that is, it's essentially the same as a second. So that's only, in this case, my root note here is actually D. Okay, so the second D is E. But if I wanna make it a nine, I have to move up the octave. So there's my octave D, that note there, that's E up the octave. Okay, so that is an interval of a nine. You can hear it's kind of a, a, a slightly kind of, it's not massively tense, but it's an unusual sort of sound. But when we feature it within a minor seven chord, or as well as, you know, these existing intervals in a minor seven chord, we get this really cool sound with it's got a, like a, I guess a little bit more of an interesting sound it's more a bit more depth to it than a standard minor seven chord so let me just play them back to back regular minor seven so our first shape looks something like this so this is a D minor nine chord so we're going to build this with our second finger on the fifth fret of A that's our root note first finger on the third fret of D that's a flattened third and, sorry first finger I did say first I said third there for a minute. Third finger now on the fifth fret of G, that's our flat seven. And fourth finger on the fifth fret of B, and that's the crucial nine. So you'll notice when I was talking about the buildup of the minor seven chord before, the intervallic buildup of it, I included a fifth, okay? So you'll see in this minor nine chord, we don't have a fifth. And the reason for that is that generally, if you're gonna 
remove a, a certain interval from, a, from chords. It's generally the fifth that goes first because the fifth just kind of bulks out the chord. It doesn't really give us much kind of harmonic info. And that's speaking of a perfect fifth. If you had like a flattened or a sharpened fifth, that's a different story. But with the terms of a perfect fifth, you can kind of get away with not having it there. Um, so in this case, root, flat third, flat seven, nine. And that's our first minor nine voicing. So one thing that is really common that Tom Mish does is he seems to play his voicings without the root note. Okay, so check this out. If I bar, if I remove that second finger from the A string, and then I take my first finger there and I bar it across that third fret, all the way to the third fret of the higher E string, and play it like that. I bring this G in on top, and that G, to in relation to D, is an interval of an 11. If that's below the octave, it's a fourth, okay? So if I'm voicing it like this, it technically becomes a G, uh, sorry, a D minor 11, but there's a reason for that. So check this out. We can do this nice kind of little embellishment that I like to play, and if you put that in context, makes it a little bit more interesting. Let me just put the looper on, play a note of D at the bottom and you'll hear what, what it sounds like in context. So, so check this out. So that's something that I really like to do with that particular chord shape. As I say, if you're playing along with somebody else or with a bass player or with a backing track, you have the freedom to emit these root notes. So definitely keep that in mind. So that's our first D minor nine chord shape. Let's now take a look at another one. So the way that I've organized this course is that I wanted to give you, well, I mean, obviously there's many, many different, you know, loads and loads of different ways of playing these particular chords but I wanted to give you one that has its root note on the A string and one that has its root note on the E string, just to give you kind of a bit of, you know, um, variation for playing at different points on the neck. So our second D minor nine chord sounds something like this. And this is a really, really common one. This is used a hell of a lot, not just in this kind of neo soul style of music. It's also used a lot in jazz as well. Um, so this one, we're still playing it um, from the root note of D, we're now playing it from the 10th fret of the higher E string. So this is based on that minor seven chord shape. So this is kind of the E minor bar chord shape, but obviously you remove your fourth finger. But there's a small change that we have to make to this in order to feature the root note as well, because we have to get the nine all the way up here on this higher E string, this fret number 12. So I want you to bring your thumb over, place it on that 10th fret of the low E string. And what that should also do is allow you to kind of mute that A string. Okay, so your thumb should be sort of touching just on the A string there. So you see if I play it, it just kind of sounds like a dead note. So in addition to that, first finger is barring over the 10th fret from D to the higher E. Okay, and then also you wanna get this fourth finger and play it on the 12th fret of E. So that's bringing in that crucial nine. So it sounds like that. If we look at the intervallic buildup of this one as well, it's something like this. We have our root note, flat seven, flat third, fifth. So you see there's a fifth in this one, and then a nine on top. And this is, you know, these chords are both movable. So we can play them all over the place. Really, really cool usable chords. So, in this case, we can also emit the root note from this one. So, if we remove that thumb and we can start doing, I mean, you can still get that embellishment with the thumb in place, but it's not quite as comfortable. So, if I take that thumb away, just have the bar here, and then I can do another one of these little, little hammer on embellishments that sound really cool in context. So, again, let's get the looper going. Here we go, so. And then 
the other shape. Okay, so that's two minor nine chord shapes there that you can use straight away. And what I would recommend is basically trying something like, like I did there. If you've got a looper available or some sort of backing track, just see if you can challenge yourself to move between the chord shapes like that. And it's also important to be able to see how they fit in relation to their minor seven counterparts. Okay, so you can also try it. We'll try this in one of the later lessons. You can try subbing any minor seven chord you see in for one of these chords and you see what it sounds like. And sometimes you can get a really, really cool, slightly more sophisticated sound. Um, so have fun with that. Get those voicings under your fingers and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks a lot for joining us guys. So if you want to head back to the start of the course, you can click here. And if you want to move on to the next video, you can click here. Also, please don't forget to like, subscribe and comment because we always love to hear how you've got on with the course.